Daniel, just to start with, uh, what would you say you know, are some of the challenges that this profession faces? Well, look, uh, the profession faces lots of challenges which we can't finish naming one by one. But I would say, in general, these challenges are attached to unresolved industry difficulties. This may include um, um, budget, low budget for newsrooms. Uh, newsrooms uh, sometimes uh, find it very hard to fund their programs and to sustain uh, the dissemination of information uh, with their journalists. But then you also find specific problems that journalists themselves as workers in the newsroom faces. Mm -hmm. This may include uh, law compensation or salaries and uh, maybe conditions that are not so conducive, uh, maybe lack of appreciation and so forth. Mm -hmm. But key to that is also a question of um, censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a general feeling that uh, journalists although not widespread in Namibia, uh, somehow censored, the information is censored, they do not have that much freedom to express themselves or to speak truth to power as alluded to by the uh, uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, speaking truth to power is quite a sensitive uh, uh, thing that sometimes um, journalists feel that they don't have unfortunately, uh, that luxury. Mm -hmm. mm. Namibia has ranked number one for many years, as you do know, in, you know, in terms of where journalists um, are free to express and, and in terms of how journalism uh, uh, is seen in, in Africa and also globally. Do you say that doesn't speak to the true picture of what is you know, on the ground? Generally, I would say Namibia is a country that uh, has maintained peace from independence and that does not only go uh, politically as in so far as journalists are concerned we have never seen a uh, journalist killed right. or arrested arbitrary uh, because they reported uh, a b c d that is controversial or they spoke truth to power mm -hmm. per se but there is always a question that, Nina, I like to ask. To what extent do we say enough is enough? Are we pushing boundaries mm -hmm. so that somebody is really touched or aggrieved to a point that it attracts maybe arrest mm -hmm. or intimidation? or are we just scratching the surface? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe if we start going deeper, doing investigative journalism, um, maybe we, we might be surprised that it's not uh, the freedom as we think it is, but it's worth applauding the country mm -hmm. uh, that so far we have maintained uh, press freedom, even ranking at number one. Yeah, it's something yeah. to take home. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that one of the challenges, you, you said there are a myriad of challenges, but you only mentioned one or two, and one of them was, you know, having a conducive environment to work in. Um, would you say that the, con the current conditions, are they conducive enough to meet job outputs, or are journalists sort of, um, you know, uh, shortchanged short in, in that manner? You see, it will vary from one media house to another. Um, the conditions in the newsroom at NBC might not necessarily be the same with the conditions at New Era or any other uh, media house. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say generally uh, what we pick up in conversations with our counterparts from various media house is that they, they seem to be a, a general I don't know whether we should call it a perception that journalists are not well appreciated, right. they are not well um, remunerated, um, but we need to define what, what is a conducive working environment. Correct. Uh, it's 
us journalists, the onus is placed onto us to define what is a conducive environment and possibly work towards attaining that conducive environment. Yeah. Because if we wait, I don't think there will be anybody that will do it for us. In, in your opinion, Daniel, what would the right conditions of operations be? Like we said again, um, appreciation for one's work as a journalist, but not only that, with the evolving uh, world of digital migration and, mm -hmm. and, and so on, we have seen with the challenges of COVID-19, for example, there's an issue of working from home, there, there is an issue of now social media taking over right. uh, the media. So we may need to equip our journalists with the available technologies that will enable them to optimize their content mm -hmm. uh, to be compatible with social media and, and, and the evolving technologies. So do you think this year's theme of for World Press Day journalism under digital siege is befitting? I think it comes at the right time where we are talking about digital migration. As we find refuge, and most of us journalists find refuge in social media as a safe haven for free speech, mm -hmm. there will be efforts from uh, various corners to kind of siege or to, to kind of um, uh, censor or in, even intimidate at some point uh, journalists. So I think it comes at the right time and I think it should serve as a reminder for us as general citizens but also for governments mm -hmm. to respect and honor their commitment to press freedom as enshrined in the United Nations Freedom Charter, but in case of Namibia, in fact, it's a fundamental right enshrined in our constitution. Mr. Nadunya, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.